Hello, my name is John Majorana and I work for Arkema Inc. and we make the Fluorine brand of refrigerants and today we're going to be retrofitting an R22 system. In this case, it's a three and a half ton straight AC system and we're going to be evacuating the R22 and we're going to be charging with 427A. The first thing you want to do when doing a retrofit is record the system's operating parameters on 22. So you want to record your discharge temperatures and pressure, evaporator temperature, pressures, your superheat, your subcooling, and your air differential, and then also your amps. So I'm going to do that right now, and then we'll get started. Okay. Now that I've recorded my baselines running 22, I'm going to pump down the system, evacuate the 22. Okay, we're done pumping down the system. I've recorded my weight of how much 22 was evacuated, and it was about 9.3 pounds came out of the system. The original charge was supposedly 9.5, as was mentioned on the sticker of the unit itself. Okay, we recovered the R22. Uh, now I'm going to go braze in a new filter dryer. As I said, it's always recommended to, uh, to install a new filter dryer whenever you open up a system, especially when doing a retrofit. So I want to go downstairs or go inside and braze this in, and I'll come back out. Uh, now is typically the time where you'd want to leak check the system. Obviously, you can leak check the system through pulling a vacuum or uh, through pressurization with nitrogen. So at this time, I'm going to do that, run a quick leak check on it before I recharge with 427A. Okay, now I'm ready to charge in the R427A. The factory charge on this system was 9.5 pounds. And it's always a good rule of thumb when you're recharging with 427A that you want to go to 90% and then look at your superheat and subcooling and adjust from there. So I'm going to weigh in eight and a half pounds of refrigerant. So. Okay, I weighed in eight and a half pounds of R427A. The system's up and running. Um, right now, I'm going to let the system equalize, but so far, so good. I'm pulling about the same amount of amps as I did with, uh, with R22 about 2% more actually, and um, right now my subcooling and superheats are again equalizing out. So I'm going to let this run for about another 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and finish charging um, the 427A. I want to explain a couple fundamental differences between R22 and the different uh, blended gases out there. R22, as I explained, is a single component gas, chlorodifluoromethane. It contains chlorine, and it was the chlorine that was absorbing ozone, and that's why we're phasing it out. However, it's also the chlorine component within 22 that made it miscible with mineral oil, as well as aquabenzene, and as well as PoE. 22 is a great refrigerant. It's miscible with all the oils. Unfortunately, because we can't make a refrigerant with chlorine in it anymore, um, the products that we have out now, 427A, 407C, are HFCs. They don't contain chlorine. They're hydrofluorocarbons. Therefore, they're not miscible with mineral oil. Different manufacturers will try to do different things in their formulations, placing additives in the refrigerant to help with oil return, but technically they're not miscible. I'm saying this because a contractor needs to understand that not all 22 systems can be retrofitted easily. In this case, split system, evaporator relatively close to the condenser, 9 foot a line set, it's a, it's a pretty easy application, it's a pretty easy retrofit. As you can see, we didn't change the oil, we went through the, uh, uh, I went through the steps of what we did do, and this retrofit's going to work out well. But there's going to be other layouts, system layouts that are going to be more involved and in the end of the day when you do your cost of labor versus the call at a cost of 22 whatever it may be you might wind up sticking with 22 and as I said 22 will be available after 2020 
We just don't know um, what the price will be and how much will be available. Let me give you an example of a system that you might, you might want to uh, change the oil. Compressor condenser on the rooftop, feeding evaporators underneath. That system already now is kind of struggling with oil return, depending on how it was installed. Uh, and um, that's not going to get any better if you put another refrigerant in there, this an admissible combination. Conversely, a package unit on a roof is similar to this, even more closed coupled. Those cases are easy to do retrofits without changing the oil. Uh, another little note as well is that systems that are not sized correctly with 22, or perhaps the load has changed over the years, they're not going to work any better with any other gas out there. So you need to keep those things in mind. 427A is a great retrofit for R22. It's formulated in such a way to where it's tolerable of mineral oil. So in many applications, you don't have to change the oil. Whereas with 407C, it's formulated in such a way that it needs POE. So any application you're going to use 407C with, you should be using 407, uh, you should be using POE oil. Whereas again, with 427A, in most applications, uh, you can use it with mineral oil. Again, in some other applications, it's probably wise to change the oil. All right, the system's been running for about 15, 20 minutes now, and it's pretty much equalized, and um, I'm running relatively the same superheat and sub that I was with 22. 22 is giving me 15 degrees superheat. I'm running 12 degrees superheat now. It was also giving me 14 degrees sub and I'm running 11. So I'm right in line with where um, where I would expect it to be. My suction my suction pressures are 5 psi lower, and my discharge pressures are 8 psi higher. Uh, that's right in, li in line again with where we expect the system to be. So basically, we're pretty much done this retrofit. If you have any questions, please visit our website, forain.com, and there you can find all of our information. And um, have a good day. Thank you.